This plant is alive. Of course this plant is alive. I mean, it's a plant, and plants are living things, and it's green, and it's growing, and I have to water it. But what about other things, like bacteria, or coral, or dirt? Are those things alive? There's an entire discipline of science that's dedicated to studying life. It's called biology, and biology is the scientific study of living things. To understand life, we need to define what it means to be living. But first, what are we going to learn in this video? We'll start by looking at the way living things are ordered, how simple molecules become more complex systems. Then we will look at the characteristics of a living thing. Biology is huge, and there's so many different aspects to studying life. Everything starts off with atoms. These are the building blocks of life, and it consists of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Atoms bond to one another, and they create tiny molecules that provide the blueprint and building materials of life. And then these simple building materials combine to create cells and these structures inside cells that are called organelles. And cells combine together to create more complex systems called tissues. Tissues like the waxy odor layer of this leaf called the cuticle. Each tissue has a specific purpose that work together to form organs. This entire leaf is an organ with many different tissues working together for a more specific purpose. Our body has organs as well, like our lungs and our kidney or stomach. Each organ plays an essential role and they combine together to create organisms. And so this tree is an organism. The leaves, the trunk, the roots, they all work together to make the tree. Many of the same type of organism can come together and form a population. So like this forest is all made up of the same type of tree, or you know, we can have a population of chipmunks that live in the forest. A community is when different populations interact with each other, like the trees in this chipmunk and acorns. There are non-living things that can affect how communities work together. Those non-living things with the community around them is called an ecosystem. This will include the physical environment like the dirt and the rocks and the water. Finally, different ecosystems fit together to form a biosphere. The biosphere regulates itself as ecosystems within the biosphere interact with one another. We call our biosphere planet Earth. Atoms, molecules, cells, tissues, organs, organisms, populations, communities, ecosystems, and finally the biosphere. So all matter is made up of atoms, but somewhere along the line between atoms and the biosphere, things become alive. What does it mean to be alive? Biologists don't completely agree on a single standard definition of life because life is so diverse and life is so complex. In general, life is going to share these common characteristics. Number one, living things are composed of cells. Cells are specialized units surrounded by a membrane, kind of like a tiny water balloon where the inside is filled with a variety of special structures that will carry out specific tasks. Some organisms are composed of a single cell capable of carrying out all the basic functions of life. Other organisms are made up of billions and trillions of cells that are all working together to sustain life. The first scientists to study organisms at the microscopic level found that every organism contains cells. With further research and experimental evidence, they developed a theory called cell theory, which states all organisms are made of cells and all cells come from pre-existing cells. The second characteristic of life is that life grows, repairs, reproduces according to a genetic code found in DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is a huge molecule and every cell in a living thing has DNA inside the tiny structures called chromosomes. The genetic code is a set of instructions that tell cells what to do, and this code is built on four building blocks, represented by the letter abbreviations of their names, A, T, C, and G. The third characteristic of life is that life requires energy. Organisms within an ecosystem work together to capture energy from the sun and then transfer that energy throughout the food chain. So plants will harvest the sun's energy and use that to drive the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes the sun's energy and stores it up in the form of sugars. Organisms that convert the sun's energy into sugar are called producers. Consumers are organisms that feed on producers and sometimes feed on other consumers. And consumers eat the sugar and the cells of the consumers use the sugar as energy to build, grow, and reproduce. The cycle continues, it's called the food chain. The fourth characteristic of life is that life can regulate itself. In order to survive, organisms must maintain an internal biological balance while the environment around them is ever changing. Organisms will control their temperature and moisture and acidity, just to name a few. This balance is called homeostasis, which means like 
the same. For example, humans are mammals and need to maintain an internal temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. When the temperature of our environment gets above 37 degrees, we need to regulate our temperature. So we have special systems in place like sweat glands that will release some of the heat from our body. This kind of self-regulation is called feedback. There are two types of feedback. There's positive feedback and negative feedback. Negative feedback is when an organism needs to slow or stop a process based on the product of that process. As mammals, our bodies will automatically keep warm. If it's really hot outside, a negative feedback response will stop the warming. On the other hand, there's positive feedback, and that's when an organism increases a process. For example, if you cut yourself, your body will work to stop the bleeding by sending platelets to the site so that the blood can clot. Platelets will release a signal to attract more platelets, and so the more platelets that arrive at the cut, the more platelets will be attracted. The fifth characteristic of life is that life will reproduce and develop. Life comes from life. Organisms reproduce to create more of their own kind. Single-celled organisms, like this paramecium, split in half to create an exact copy of themselves. Multicellular organisms, like this fish, pass on their genetic information through a process that unites an egg cell with a sperm cell. These two cells carry the genetic information of each parent, and when the cells combine, they create a new organism that takes after the parents. A new fish has the traits of its parent fish, and organisms will grow and develop according to the set of instructions in their genes. The sixth characteristic of life is that life evolves. Organisms adapt to changes in their environment. Charles Darwin observed finches, on a small chain of islands called the Galapagos. He noticed that the birds did not all have the same sized beak. Some of the birds had long skinny beaks, while others had short broad beaks. The type of beak depended on the availability of food in the region of the island that the birds lived. Short broad beaked birds ate seeds and nuts that they could crack with their beaks. The long skinny beaked birds were able to reach into tiny holes and push through plants to feed on the food that the short beaked birds could not. Darwin proposed that the different beaked birds evolved from a common ancestor, and the changes to the beak depended on the environment. Organisms will adapt and change their environment through the process of evolution. It's the change in the characteristics of a population over time. The shape of the beak changes in response to the availability of food. So did you learn everything in this video? Well if you did, you learned that biology is the study of Life. life is ordered, but in general, living things share some basic characteristics. Living things are made of cells. Living things have genetic information called DNA. Living things use and acquire energy. Living things reproduce and grow. And living things adapt to changes in the environment through the process of evolution.